What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at it again with another video. So we're gonna check out 10 greatest war game matches ever by Parts Unknown, man. War games right around the corner, man. I'm looking forward to it this Saturday. I cannot wait. It's gonna be a great time. Um, also, before we get straight into this video, man, happy Thanksgiving to all y'all. Hope y'all having a great Thanksgiving. Hopefully you ate real well, got the chance to relax and chill with your family and loved ones, man. So hopefully you guys are doing that as well. But I'm, I'm, I'm ready to see some more war games, man. I, I'm ready for it. I think it's going to be a good time and uh, I hope you guys are ready for it as well this weekend because you know we're going to live stream that, man, on the main page. Let's get right into this and we appreciate all love and support. Let's do the damn thing. War games! <laughs> so after years of waiting, WWE is oh, finally to set to bring the classic war game stipulation match to the main roster with this week's Survivor Series. No longer just an NXT exclusive, WWE is probably going to start off with a banger, almost a guarantee considering Sheamus is involved. But they are not the only ones to house the match over the years. There have been war games matches in one form or another in most major promotions in North America dating back to the Stips inception in the NWA, courtesy of the mind of Dusty Rhodes. Mm -hmm. It's one of wrestling's great creations, a double cage with two or more teams entering at alternating staggered intervals. It has built-in psychology with the heels having an advantage for the baby faces to overcome, yep. except for when they f*** that bit up, but that is a tangent for another list. And the more modern matches have evolved to also include some of the biggest high spots of the year for NXT and AEW. Let the war games begin. I'm Tempest hailing from Parts Fun Known, and these are the 10 greatest war games matches ever. Love but these matches. before we get on with this list, make sure, of course, that you like this video and subscribe to Parts Fun Known so you can never miss another fun wrestling list just like it. We've done lists of other great stipulation matches like the Elimination Chamber and Money in the Bank. So check those out. Check out Money in the Bank. Go that check looks them really out. good. Before we dive into the list, I'd like to give a huge thanks to Raid Shadow Legends oh, for sponsoring this video. the Raid Shadow Legends bag. Not mad at it. Not mad at it at all. 21. AEW's first foray into the double cage just misses the cut, not because it isn't a great match, just watch it, you'll see that it is, but unfortunately when people talk about this match, they don't talk about how great it is. With FTR brawling with Santana and Ortiz, mm -hmm. Wardlow having a hoss fight with Jake Hager, and Sammy Guevara doing excellent high flying. No, they talk about the finish that on yep. paper sounds great. The inner circle surrendering on behalf of Chris Jericho as MJF threatens to pitch him off the top of the cage only for MJF to push Jericho off anyway. But in practice, Jericho fell onto a bed and Twitter yeah. had a laugh about it. Number 10. The yeah, fourth he pretty much fell into like a like soft padding. So they probably should have did another spot. But I mean, I get it. It's all about safety. But at the same time, it, it didn't look good. Like when the camera zoomed in. Horseman versus Dusty Rhodes, Nikita Koloff, the Road Warriors, and Paul Ellering, NWA Great American Bash, 1987. I wasn't even born yet. <laughs> the earliest War Games match to feature on this list is a sight to behold. Has it aged the most gracefully? No, not really, but how much of the wrestling from 1987 has? Mm -hmm. These early War Games matches set the bar very high for their time, and there is still plenty of enjoyment to get out of them today, especially when you consider the level of talent involved in them. The Road Warriors are the most ridiculously over tag team in history. The pops they get being unstoppable badasses are ludicrous, mm -hmm. and they have the best heels in the business to play opposite them as well. The four with Ric Flair and the Four Horsemen bumping around for the two monsters, as well as Dusty and Koloff. What the match really has going for it is Jim Ross on commentary and the fans being at a fever pitch for minutes on end. Properly elevating this match to great territory as this ends up being one of those early matches in a stipulation's life where not a lot of exciting things happen, but it works for its time because it's still revolutionary and the mm -hmm. people involved are the top stars of the business. The good guys won by ramming J.J. Dillon into the cage until he quit, and I mean, yeah, that'll do it, <laughs> but not before a woman screamed when Animal was thrown into the cage. Amazing. <laughs> Number nine, the Midnight Express, Road Warriors, and Dr. Death, Steve Williams versus the Fabulous Freebirds and the Samoan SWAT team. NWA Great American Bash, oh, 1989. I'm, I'm, I'm getting my history. I'm getting my history right now because, you know, I didn't know what War Games was until I saw it originally being introduced in NXT. And then that's when I found out um, it was, you know, the the... The inspiration came, you know, came from Dusty Rhodes. He was the one that came up with the idea and, and you know, took it from there. So, 
that's this is why this is pretty cool. I wanted to check this out just to kind of get the history upon some of the legendary matches before the NXT ones that we ended up getting. A lot of what I just said applies to this match from the Great American Bash in 1989 as well. If you love to hear an arena full of people losing their sh for some big meaty men bumping meat, these matches are for you. The Road Warriors and Dr. So Death he are said that. so much fun to watch as they <clears throat> beat the sh out of the Freebirds and the Samoan Swans. <laughs> well, hey, Rikishi. Meanwhile, you had the Midnight Express, the best working team of the 80s doing the lion's share of the wrestling, which is also an excellent viewing experience, especially when you get to watch Bobby Eaton, one of the best and most underrated performers of his and any other generation, start the match and get some one-on-one -on -one time with Jimmy Garvin. You had the extra fun of Michael Hayes not wanting to get into the match, but this match really is carried by the insane performances of the babyfaces, which culminate with Animal getting the win for his team with a neck crank. A bit more climactic than the last one, but we were not yet at the point where we would see the finish be a super creative moment like we would in years to come. Number 8, mm. Team Angle versus Team Cage, TNA Lockdown 2007. Look at the spread on Jeremy Borash's collar. That's the <laughs> collar of a man that knows how to yeah, we don't get to talk about what? TNA in a positive light on this channel very often, and they certainly are the biggest offenders when it comes to f***ing up the man advantage stipulation, but they really nailed their lethal lockdown match on one occasion in 2007. Lethal Lockdown is the one match on this list that doesn't feature a second ring, but the rules of the match remain the same. Well, that is, except for TNA being TNA, and making this a bit more complicated. Hmm. The person who got the pin in this match would earn a world title shot against Christian Cage, because it wouldn't be TNA without some infighting in a big tag match. Goofiness aside, this match is f chaos. However, <laughs> it is chaos with all the biggest stars in the company. Kurt Angle, Samoa Joe, AJ Styles, Sting, oh, Rhino, Scott Steiner, Christian, Jeff Jarrett, just battering each other. You had Angle and Styles being the two best workers in the ring to start, and then just nonstop action. Oh, maybe that's where they got their name. And Carnage <laughs> throughout. There's tax, there's guitars, there's tax in a guitar. Oh! Madness. AJ gets ready to fly off the cage and drops like a stone. It's not the work of psychology that other matches on this list are, save for the finish where Jarrett sacrifices the title shot to Sting, but it is the kind of batch insanity that gave TNA its charm in the mid 2000s. That does sound Number insane. Seven, Undisputed Era versus Tommaso Ciampa, Keith Lee, Dominic Dijakovic. Yep, this was a Karen great Owens. one. NXT TakeOver War Games 2019. This was great. The fans strangely aren't into this match as much as you would expect. Until I the was. moment that changes and changes fast. This match is best remembered for being the one where Kevin Owens makes his surprise return to NXT in one of the coolest moments in NXT's War Games history. Facts. And from there, the match is white hot. Undisputed Era enter draped in gold while Tommaso Ciampa enters wearing Reaper's mask. <laughs> there isn't quite so much plunder as there was in the women's match from the same show, and we'll get to that match shortly. Mm -hmm. But this match delivers where the women only teased with tables and tables and tables <laughs> and tables. Yep. <laughs> Not a fun mix of Dominic Dijakovic and Keith Lee's big man does thing big man shouldn't do style and the super indie style of Kevin Owens in the Undisputed Era. Kevin Owens back in NXT was a lovely moment that really elevated this match. If you ever want to get goosebumps, go watch the clip of Kevin Owens coming back to the NXT for War Games and listen to that crowd pop. Instant goosebumps. One of my favorite moments ever in NXT is seeing him come back for War Games and the pop and Adam Cole's face selling it. Oh, it was great. But they ended this match with the climax, with Champa hitting this the air raid is, crash uh, on Cole off the cage through two tables, uh, furthering Champa's story as he tried to regain Goldie from Adam Cole. Number six, Undisputed Era versus Pat McAfee. This was a good Dunn, one too. Cody Lorcan and Danny Birch. This NXT was a good one, man. War Games 2020. It's crazy that the best War Games match that the Undisputed Era had was the one with the football player. Yeah, this one was good. Pat McAfee match. War Games once again went with the tables upon tables upon tables approach with the bad boys presenting a table for each member of the Undisputed Era, mm -hmm. only for the UE to turn the tables on their opponents and put each of Dunn, Lorcan, Birch, and McAfee through said tables. This was a ridiculously ambitious performance for Pat, even if he could hide yeah, himself surrounded so by super workers. He fit right in here and never looked out of place, hitting the big spot of the match with an insane swanton bomb off the cage. It's no secret at this point that McAfee is a natural at this mm -hmm. wrestling thing, but this was a gutsy performance, and he made this match better by being in it. And that Bro, McAfee was the MVP. You wouldn't think he, he should have been the MVP, but he was the MVP of this match, bro. 
This is before we knew what Logan Paul could do. Imagine if Logan Paul was in a match like this. Oh my jeez. It'd probably be even more insane. But McAfee, I give him a round of applause, man, because he showed out for this match. Showed out. He was easily, in my opinion, one the the MVP of the match. Absolutely was not a guarantee. A parade of finishers saw Lorcan finally pinned, and if there had been real fans in the building and not this else world reality where there is just white noise cheering and this is awesome chance when you can clearly see no one is chanting, this might have taken the top spot. Facts. Number five. Sting, Brian Pillman, and the Steiner Brothers versus Ric Flair, Barry Windham, Larry Zbysko, and Sid. WCW Wrestle War 1991. This is where the early War Games matches really started to take a turn into a more story-driven style, evolving past the simple but effective story beats of the Man Advantage. In this match, Brian Pillman goes against his team's wishes to enter the match as the first babyface despite being injured to get his revenge on Barry Windham. He's a house of fire and the most modern performer of the bunch in this match, but this was not a good idea for the lad as his injury and the Man Disadvantage put him and his own team down early. This match featured three dick kicks and four simultaneous figure four leg locks. <laughs> One of the first times that everybody involved got together in a coordinated oh, spot. Wow. And it really showed that these matches were indeed that evolving. That was crazy. In the end, Brian Pillman gets that powerbombed visual. on the top of his head by Sid when his feet hit the top of the cage and then powerbombed again only for my fever dream to kick in as Giant Gonzalez came down and called the match off on behalf of Pillman. This match got five stars, and it involved Sid and Giant Gonzalez. God, <laughs> rankings are fun. Number four, NXT 1.0 versus NXT 2.0, NXT War Games 2021. This match really benefits from not involving the Undisputed. Actually, I didn't. This is the one War Games NXT match I did not see. I did not see this uh, NXT ma uh, War Games match. Um... At this point, I hadn't really been watching um, NXT like that, um, and I, I bit I did hear a lot of you guys saying this was actually really really good, and I may this may be a match I may need to go check out uh, later on, probably sometime this week. But I did hear a lot of people saying this match, this War Games match, was fantastic, and it's it's on this list, so maybe there there is some truth to the praise. Era, which is a weird thing to say about four of the most talented wrestlers in NXT history. Renewed energy is through the roof in this match, and they start with the best worker from each team, Johnny Gargano and Carmelo Hayes squaring off. Making the young stars the heels against the old guard is a move straight out of WCW, but if you ignore that fact and enjoy this match in a vacuum, it's pretty beast. Braun Breaker is one of the greatest products the Performance Center has ever produced, and this match furthered his rivalry with Tommaso Ciampa the most of the various pairs of rivals involved in this match. Grayson Waller's swan dive is scary and chaotic, perfectly serving as the high point of the match. This match just feels fresh. It's exciting and new, and you get to see Johnny Gargano wrestle in war games for the first time. NXT 2.0 might not have been everyone's cup of tea, but this war games event was genuinely great, and it put a bunch of young talent over strong, which is not something you can often say about WWE. I heard this was a really Number good match. Three. Rhea Ripley, Candice LeRae, Dakota Kai, and Tegan Knox versus Shayna Baszler, Bianca Belair, this Io Shirai, really and Kaylee Ray. NXT Takeover War Games 2019. This Holy is another reason why I'm looking forward to uh, War Games this weekend because a lot of those women that was in that match are going to be in the War Games match this Saturday. That's why I'm who can't wait. This was good. This was so good. So 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 good. Holy sh. This match goes so hard. This is good. I'll be perfectly honest, guys. Takeover War Games 2019 was the one takeover I missed, and I never went back to watch it until I sat down for this list. I knew the match was great, but my lord, I didn't know it was this great. This was the mm, peak was of the good. NXT women's roster, and the best of that roster was on full display here. You had the story of Candice LeRae and Rhea Ripley as the ultimate underdog babyfaces, mm -hmm. not only having to deal with the War Games disadvantage throughout the first half of the match, but then having to continue the match two on four. When yeah, Dakota this was when Dakota Kai went roll. Oh, this was good. Mauro Ronaldo selling it. Oh, this was great. Dakota Kai turned on Tegan Knox. Rhea and Candice essentially had to wrestle two handicap matches at the same time, mm -hmm. with each woman taking on two of their opponents in each ring. 
These matches can feel a little cluttered at times, but this was the perfect blend of pacing and spacing that really makes this match stand out among the rest. These women were beating the shit out of each other in the perfect mix of violence and incredible spots, with Io Shirai hitting a picture-perfect moonsault off the cage before Rhea handcuffed herself to Shayna and hit the riptide through some chairs. Yep. I truly did myself a disservice this was good. not watching this Fantastic match, match. Number two. Blackpool Combat Club, Santana, Ortiz, and Eddie Kingston versus the Jericho Appreciation Society, AEW Blood and Guts 2022. It took a while for All Elite Wrestling. Yeah, this this was a uh, <laughs> watch. It was it lived up to his name, Blood and Guts. I enjoyed it. It was fun. It was just a car wreck. Just a car wreck. To get to put on their Blood and Guts match in front of a massive crowd. But boy, did it ever feel worth it when we finally got Blood and Guts in Detroit earlier this year. The crowd is so electric in this match, cheering for the newly star-made Wheeler Yuta to enter the match early, and then of course the monstrous reaction to Eddie Kingston mm -hmm. finally entering the cage last. AEW's Blood and Guts matches are a lot less structured than NXT's War Games matches. It feels like a lot more of the spots in the NXT matches are laid out ahead of time, whereas this match in particular felt incredibly chaotic. That's not to say either one of those approaches is better than the other, but right from the jump, Claudio and Sammy Guevara run at each other and it feels like a real fight with bodies just colliding with one another. This also has the benefit of being much more violent than any of the other matches on the Very space, violent. With Moxley using glass, tacks, spikes, and every weapon he could get his Very little match loving violent. hands on. <laughs> it is a shame that this wasn't the end of the Jericho Kingston that rivalry, because this ending of Claudio stealing Eddie's win from him really could have been the start of something awesome between yeah. them going forward. But alas, it is merely a great finish to an incredible match. And number one, the Dangerous Alliance versus Sting Squadron. WCW Wrestle War 1992. I'd always heard about how good the early War Games matches were, and I'll be honest, while still very fun, I did think that they weren't holding up quite as well as I had hoped until I watched this match. Holy sh! This match <laughs> bangs. The Dangerous Alliance is a murderer's row of awesome wrestlers. Rick Rude, Steve wow. Austin, Bobby, Arn Anderson, Larry Zbysko, and you have Paul E. Dangerously wow. spending the match going over a game plan Hold. like an actual sports coach. Wait, a wait a minute. Boost. Is you that Paul E.'s row of awesome wrestlers? Wow. Rick Rude, Steve Austin, Bobby Eaton, Arn Anderson, Larry Zbysko, and you have Paul E. Dangerously spending the match going over. That's so seeing a young Steve Austin. Wow, that's crazy, bro. Wow for a game plan like an actual sports coach making the decisions of who starts and what they do actually feel meaningful there were so many new elements thrown into this match medusa climbed the cage and dropped oh. paulie's giant brick cell phone into the cage for the heels to use not realizing she'd be spawning the finish of every shark cage match in wwe some decades later nikita koloff and sting had a great enemies turned friends moment as they were forced to decide if they were going to stand together or not and koloff shoved sting to the side to save him from a heel double team before they eventually hugged in one of the bigger pops of the night the heels unscrew the top rope from one of the rings, giving Damn. the match a feeling of chaos that you only really get when the ring starts getting destroyed, and Zabisco used the turn to try and hit Sting, but missed and hit Eaton, allowing Sting to lock in an arm bar on Eaton's injured shoulder for the win. It is a shame that this would be the last truly great War Games match WCW would ever produce, Damn. but holy hell, did they save the best for sort of last. And that's our nah, list. That, you that seemed sure hella interesting, bro. This is just cool seeing how these wrestlers' careers, early in their career, how it turned out, you know, later for them, man. It's, this is why it's always cool to see the history of wrestling and how far we've come, you know what I'm saying? If it wasn't for certain things happening in the past, we wouldn't have the some of the great matches we have or have had uh, recently, you know what I'm saying? So uh, this was dope. So comment down below, let me know. What's your favorite War Games match ever? Let me know down below. But I really appreciate you guys for all the love and support you guys have shown this year. It's been truly amazing hopefully you guys have a great thanksgiving enjoy the food enjoy family time enjoy friends uh enjoy your friends man you know life is very short uh we say this all the time but it's, it's so true and evident in the world we live in today life is very short so if you have a chance to cherish your loved ones cherish your family members cherish your friends do that that's what thanksgiving should really be all about but i appreciate all the love and support road to 100k appreciate y'all keeping me see y'all next one peace